First of all, I have to thank everyone that voted for us. I definitely didn't expect to be here. My wife, however, expected me to be here, and she made me bring a different pair of shoes because she didn't like the ones I was wearing. So I hope these things are okay, sweetheart. But I'm not here to talk to you about my shoes. I'm here to talk to you about price, cost. Cost is A, if not the determining factor in almost any transaction. Doesn't matter if you're gonna go buy a pair of jeans, you're gonna go to your favorite restaurant and buy a steak, or you're gonna buy a new car. Cost matters. My name's Jeremy Bodenhammer. I'm CEO and co-founder of Shiphawk. This is my partner and CFO, Aaron Freeman. And we're excited to be here today to share with you how we expect to disrupt a $200 billion portion of the transportation and logistics industry in this country. Now, before you laugh, I have to admit, I don't know how much of that $200 billion is made up of postcards. So there's an element of cost in almost any online transaction that's hidden, it's obscured, it's subsidized. And this is a problem. It's a problem for huge retailers like eBay and Etsy, and it's a problem for millions of smaller retailers. This problem is the cost of packing and shipping. Now, why is this such a problem? It's a problem because it's so hard to determine what it costs to pack and ship something. But it is a problem. 65 million people a year are going onto search engines and asking questions directly related to the cost of packing and shipping. Now, before I go on, I know there's at least three guys in the back that have already pulled up FedEx.com on, on their computers and they're about to yell out, bro, I got prices right here. Yeah, sure, if your items look like these, if they're in boxes, if they're in crates, if they're on pallets. Our customers don't wanna know what it costs to ship a box. Our customers are retail shippers. Our customers are small and medium-sized businesses that ship a diverse group of goods. We call them micro niches. They're antique collectives, they're auction houses, they're equipment brokerage and resellers. Our customers ship real items. They ship lamps, they ship guitars. They go onto eBay, they buy a Miss Pac-Man arcade game, and they ship it across the country. They're Etsy sellers who have customers that come to the website and fill the shopping cart full of a bunch of random items and have no idea what those random items amount to. These are just the beginning of the problems. The market itself is incredibly fragmented. Every different type of item requires a different type of carrier. You have small parcel, you have a ton of different types of, of freight. You have same day and courier and mail and moving and, and I could go on and on but I'm gonna bore you so I'm gonna stop. None of these guys will give you quotes unless your item is in a box, in a crate or on a pallet. If you can't get quotes from these guys, it's gonna take you hours or days to get quotes back from the few people that can give them to you. And you're not gonna get any carrier comparisons back. No price options, no service time options. You're gonna get whatever that guy gives you until you do the work all over again and call someone else. And if you have the audacity to, be, to buy something online, you're gonna have very few options as to how you receive that product. The seller is going to tell you what shipping options they'll offer you. Now, when I was younger, my mom had to book my dad's travel arrangements through a, a travel agent because traveling was so complex. And the truth is that shipping today is just like travel was back then, only there's no agent. So from that perspective, we are to shipping what kayak is to travel. And until today, there have been no solutions to any of these problems. If you go to shiphawk.com, you will find that we have aggregated all of these different markets into one website. Now, what does this mean for you as the shipper? This means that you can ship almost any item of almost any size or weight to almost any destination from one website. Then we're gonna convert your real item into packed weights and dimensions. This allows us to provide customers with instant data, instant packing quotes, instant shipping quotes. And your shipping quotes aren't the traditional shipping quotes that the guy in the back of the room with FedEx still up is looking at from just one carrier. You get all the carriers and all the options offered by those carriers. Then you get to schedule a pickup at your home or office, or you can find a local Shiphawk network location where you can drop your item off. And the system facilitates not only these national jobs, but also local delivery. So a little antique store that someone local comes and buys a big hutch from can get that delivered by the same agent that picks it up. Then you pay, you print your receipt, you print your label, and you're done. No waiting, no lines. You can overnight a letter or ship a tank 
from your living room in your slippers in less than three minutes. Shiphawk makes money by collecting a commission from all the service providers that we send business to, shipping companies, packing companies, um, insurance companies, et cetera. And Aaron and I are the right people to solve this problem because combined, we have over 26 years of experience in shipping, supply chain, and IT. I bought a failing shipping company, grew it exponentially, and sold it, employing the exact same methods that we are advocating here with Shiphawk on a much larger scale. Shiphawk solves a problem that people experience every day. It costs people real money and real time. Next time you need to ship something, go to shiphawk.com and help us make shipping easy for everyone. Great job. <laughs> Great presentation. Thank you. I don't have much time for ice. Judges, what do you think? So just uh, I know you guys didn't think you were going to be up on stage, but friendly advice, don't spend four minutes out of six articulating the problem. We got the problem <laughs> within 30 seconds, just wanted to see more of the product. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't take it one level further, which is almost you know, dispatch a task rabbit to your house or to your business, grab the thing, wrap it up, package it, and take it out. Because I know as an infrequent seller and buyer, that's the kind of service I would additionally pay for. It might be more of a differentiator than just um, looking between a few carriers and printing a label, which is, which is useful, don't get me wrong. But is there another level behind this? Yes. We provide that exact service. It's just not through TaskRabbit. It could be. Sure. But it's you not have your own dedicated people. So right? basically, we have, in my last company, um, I built kind of a, a national brokerage element to the company where people from all over the world would call me with items in random places and need them in some other random place. So I built up a network of the top agents around the world. So we have agents, these packing professionals, people like Craters and Freighters and Navis Pack and Ship, these top uh, professional packing and shipping experts that will go out, pick up items that need to be packed or crated, and produce that element of the shipping. Then they turn it over to r &L or FedEx or UPS or any number of carriers who conduct the next step. And then we also integrate the insurance element in there too. So if you're s sending something that's valuable, you have insurance options just like you have shipping options. So do you have to r roll out by region then? We do. In fact, we're rolling out uh, on Monday in Southern California and we're beta testing in Southern California. We have agents lined up all over America already, but we're not turning the spigot on because the truth is, we'll get killed. We can't so handle the So if there's volume. that packing and shipping for you, wouldn't it be better off as a mobile lab? I take a photo of the item, um, you know, someone gives me a quote, dispatch, rough time, they'll show up, rough location, those kinds of things. That is in the queue. I'm trying not queue. to use the word <laughs> U-B-E-R, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> for shipping. That's in the queue for delivery. The, the truth is, our MBV product, will let you pack and ship any item of any size in the US. From there, we had mobile, we had international, there's a million things that we could do, but we had to do this as much as we could. So, by the way, great presentation on oh, such you. short notice. Um, um, my question is, if, if you're basically selecting from the, from the carriers, aren't you, in, in a sense, then adding your cost to sort of the best price, how does that Everything we sell, we don't compete on price. Everything we sell is retail, and it's set by the carrier. So if FedEx has a retail ground rate of $10, that's what we post, and that's what we sell it for. And we get kicked back a commission for sending the job to all these different parties. What is the commission on that? It's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean? It, it's, it's a good commission. <laughs> all right. It's, uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you backstage. Really? That's that private, huh? Um, how, yeah, so you showed this experience on your website. How, other than the fact that you're searching across multiple vendors, how is that different than doing FedEx right now? Just going to the FedEx site and. Uh, one huge uh, difference is uh, FedEx, you got an iPad in your lap there. Yeah. Try calling FedEx up and asking them what it's going to cost to ship an iPad. They're not going to answer. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to say, well, what's its weight and dimensions? If your item's big, they're going to want freight class, they're going to want all sorts of paperwork. It's for the retail shipper. It's a disaster. So they go on to Google and they're like, dear Google, please, God, help me. How much is it going to cost me to ship my iPad? But nobody can tell them what it costs to ship an iPad. So that's one big thing that makes us different is just the data. FedEx doesn't know what's in the back of their own trucks. We know everything that's in the back of their trucks because the customers tell us in order to generate the quote. The packing professionals go pick it up and see it, take pictures of the damage. I mean, we've got the whole system completely categorized. I mean, the big questions are dimensions 
and weight, right? Correct, and usually that converts to dimensional weight, which is what everything's built on for the most part. So right now, somebody's selling out of Etsy, they've got a little scale in their office, they put it on there, they weigh the thing, and then they're like, it fits in this size box, and there's a... Well, there's, fr there's fragility, there's cost, right? Probably a few more dimensions. Uh, I'm just trying to think how complex it is. So you're building up some kind of a metadata in the back for each item, and you're adding that as you go. We have a vast database, and the database has two components. You have the component for the like, kind of small items you're talking about, which are not our niche. We're not gonna stop stuff in envelopes and ship it across the country, right? We're looking for the more healthier, uh, you know, the bigger items. Um, but, uh, I lost my train of thought. We're talking <laughs> dimensions and weight. What other? Yeah. Like variables are there that are saying, so with me as much. Oh, um, just what? Okay, so let's say it's a, a painting. Okay, what type of frame is it in? Is there glass on the front? How big is it? Because if it's a painting that's this big, it's totally different. I was talking about the database. That's what I was talking about. So we have the home goods in one database, and then in another <laughs> database we have items like equipment. So if you go onto eBay right now, you'll see all the farm equipment on there. Implements everything, and almost all of it is local pickup only. No one wants to touch shipping it. You can go to our website, put John Deere Combine D300. And we have the specs of the combine already. So we give you an instant quote. You don't have to go find that information somewhere. So then can you talk about, relate, are you working on the biz dev side where you are creating an API that can plug into people like eBay? Because, I mean, for you guys to get your name out there is going to be pretty hard. So you're going to have to like partner with people to be the driving engine of data to your site. So t talk to me about biz dev. First of all, we're already in talks with several companies to provide data, we'll call it and kind of uh, very specific data. If you think about eBay as an example, uh, it, eBay's categorical. So if you want to sell a guitar tuner, you're going to go to ebay.com, and, and they're going to see it under the category guitar accessory. They don't know anything about guitar tuners, right? So we can provide that kind of very specific data that helps them give their customers more accurate information so they can make more money on their platform, right? The other side of the thing is I come back to the 65 million people number, which is not small. There's not a lot of competition for these keywords on search engines because nobody can answer the question. That puts us in a very unique position, and we have patents on a myriad of algorithms that answer everything from how much it costs to put one item in one box, to a bunch of items in one box, to a bunch of items in a bunch of boxes on a bunch of pallets and a bunch of trucks. So you can give me any number of things, and I can put it together and tell you where it's gonna go and how much it's gonna cost based on the fact that this is a table. Please, please don't patent that. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great until that part. We're, uh, we're, I mean, that's uh, we're stuff that's pretty uh, straightforward. Thank you, guys. Ship Hawk. Congratulations on the exciting choice.